in this video we will be testing at Osrikor, the fastest track I have ever been at. Will we be able to quickly learn this new track or will we struggle to adapt to these challenging corners? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, what's up, Redactions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And today, we are up very early, I'm in my own street, next to my own home, because we are going to test at Ostrikur. Yeah, the next race of the Bino Kart Game is at Ostrikur, it's a track in the north of France, which I've never been at before. I'm about to be picked up by my mechanic and then, uh, yeah, let's go to France. <laughs> We have arrived at Ostricor. Um yeah, I have no idea where to pay the track fee, so let's find that out first. And uh, I'm a little bit of a hurry, so uh, I'll catch up with you guys after I've done the first session. A beautiful track in the north of France which is a favourite among many drivers. Mostly because the average speed at this track is ridiculously high. Before this video I had never been here before, so this track was as new for me then as it is for you right now. Also, if you are new here, why don't you subscribe? You clearly like motorsports and I post plenty of that stuff, so make sure you don't miss any new videos. Anyways, let's see what this track is like. Starting the lap here in Austria Girl, we get up to speeds of about 110 km per hour before we have a short lift going into turn 1. Hard on the power again as we now go for the second part of this straight which in races is one giant slipstream fest. A small right hand kick introduces us to very hard braking for turn 3, a hairpin in which we slow all the way down to about 40 km an hour. Getting a good exit here is vital because we again go flat out through this left hander, we use all the road on entry and take a late apex into this other left hander. We again use all the road on the right as we prepare to go into the technical section. 90 degree left hander, 90 degree left hander followed by a right hand hairpin which is another brilliant overtaking spot. The exhaust valve of the Rotex Max engine then kicks out of the hairpin into a left-right chicane, which on race day will see plenty of curb usage. Then another straight which curves slightly to the right in the braking zone for another right-hand hairpin. We start rounding out the lap now with not a double, not a triple, but a quadruple chicane. Left, right, left, right. The curbs allow us to take a very straight line to carry a lot of speed through these kinks, which is what you need to get the best possible launch onto the main straight to start your next flying lap here in Ostrikur. Phew, what a track! A lot of straights, a lot of fast corners and some big big dive bombing zones. This is definitely a power track and if you want to be fast here, you'll need one hell of an engine. Also, Slipstream will play a huge part in racing here. If you have a tow, you could gain up to 2.5 tenths in just the first sector. There's actually a video of a certain Max Verstappen racing here about 15 years ago which perfectly proves my point. Also, can we just talk about how crazy that race is? I'll leave a link to the original full video in the description down below. A little bit later on it's time to start focusing on getting up to speed. Unfortunately this was made a little bit harder by the fact that we didn't really have a reference point. Usually when you're out testing and especially when you're at the new track, you'd want to follow around drivers in the same class as you. This way you can easily spot places where you are gaining and losing time. This day however we had to figure that out ourselves and in my opinion we were definitely strong in the fast corners. You can tell this by the fact that we have basically no oversteer in these corners. We did have a few places where we were struggling though, and they were definitely the hairpin in the middle sector and also pretty much the entire last sector. You can see and especially hear that the engine bogs down completely in these corners. This is because I was struggling to keep the corner speed high. I felt like the cart was not lifting its inside rear wheel properly. Cards actually go through corners on three wheels. This is the way they are designed, but sometimes if the setup is not quite right, the inside rear wheel will stay on the ground and the card will slide. The last she came with the extreme amount of curb also proved difficult. I just couldn't quite get the good feeling with sending it over these curves. 
This is something that we had to work on, but all in all, I think we were not doing too bad. All right, guys, we're about halfway done with the day already. Um, yeah, I think it's going quite well. Um, yeah, the first session was really slippery. We were struggling a little bit with the tire pressure because we went way too low. But uh, yeah, what a track. Um, I d I'm definitely struggling with the uh, bit in the uh, in the last sector there with the two hairpins. So yeah, there's definitely something that we have to work on now. So uh, yeah, let's uh, hope that we can do that. All right, so I uh, did another session off camera whilst the uh, GoPro was charging. And I have to say that was the best one so far. Cart feels uh, okay now, not as floaty as it was. Uh, it's not as slidey anymore. I can actually take speed into the corner now and the inside rear wheel picks up very nicely. But yeah, the track is really tough. It's really physical and uh, I actually quite like it. And also a thing that surprised me is that the uh, restaurant here is actually quite nice. Look at this. Yeah, I'll show you the inside. They just closed the gate, so I don't know where I can go in. But uh, yeah, I'll show you. But uh, it's actually raining now, so I hope it uh, stops raining soon. Oh. I found a kitty. Nice. I'm not too sure, my French isn't the best, but I think this means toilets. Oh, and it's actually raining quite hard now, so I hope it doesn't get too wet. Time to go back out. Alright, with the weather completely changing every 5 seconds, we decided to go out on wets. And 2 laps later, it was completely dry. What surprised me most about this is that the wets actually held up decently well on this dry track and the cart had okay grip. But in order not to shred them, let's put on slicks now. In the meantime, we also switched back to the helmet cam, so let's go out for some more testing at this amazing track. Is it just me or is the sense of speed with the helmet cam just a lot higher? This camera angle really makes it feel like you're actually driving. And to be honest, watching this video is pretty close to the sensations you get when you're behind the wheel. Take a look. Anyways, we're not here for awesome views, we're here to practice for a race. And luckily for us, some help arrived. Yes, we now have some other drivers from my class to compare ourselves to. They were French locals and they probably knew the track well, so let's follow them around for a bit. It was definitely clear that we were losing time in a straight line. The two French drivers were battling all through this last sector, losing lots of exit speed, and even with me having double slipstream and a better exit, they still pull away on the straight. This could have many reasons however, like wrong setup, them just having really powerful engines or me just having a shit one. Having no straight line speed won't stop me though because I will just break 5 meters later and boom, job done. I definitely feel like the speed was not too bad compared to the French drivers, especially not the one we just overtook. He did however decide to launch a quick one up the inside in the following lap, but we do the old switcheroo and we're off again. However, the guy in the red helmet was slightly faster over the whole lap. But we definitely also had our strong points and in the chicane I felt like we were a lot faster than him. Unfortunately, some slower carts got in the way and he decided to peel into the pits. I also felt like there was more time to be found in the cart, so I decided to peel into the pits for a quick pit stop. I wanted the front end of the cart to feel a bit more stiff. In karting usually this means that you get a little bit more grip at the front, so I took out this bar at the front and replaced it with this round one. Torsion bars are a great way to experiment with cart setup. So that is why you should absolutely go to kracingshop.com to order yours today. Right now there is a 25% discount on stuff like cart parts, engine parts, helmets, gloves and much much more. If you use the code RED25 on checkout. But wait, there's more. Upcoming Friday is Black Friday. I can't reveal too much yet, but what I can reveal is that it's going to be absolutely crazy with discounts. So check out kracingshop.com on Friday, use the code RED25 on other days and save your money. Anyways, after putting some extra fuel in the cart, we go on our way again. It actually started raining a few laps later, but despite that, we set one of our best times of the day. Even faster than what we did with Slipstream. Enjoy a full hot lap, no commentary and no music.
Anyways guys, with that final hot lap also comes the end to this video. We had a blast testing here and preparing for the B&O karting series. And this track is probably one of my favorite ones of all time now. Now in the last video, we were racing at a track which was absolutely crazy too, only for a completely different reason. That video is on screen right now and I'll see you all next time. Peace.